Potentiometers, also known as variable resistors. These are your dials and knobs and sliders, basically analog controls. Nowadays, everything's digital, but back in my day, your volume knob on your speakers, your slider on your thermostat, all of these are done with potentiometers. There are two types of potentiometers. Your rotary ones are the ones that turn. They might have a minimum and maximum. These would be your volume ones. Some of them will turn multiple circles, depending on what they're used for. The other type are straight ones, sliders, whatever you want to call them, that just go back and forth. They're the same thing, they just move a different way. And these are more likely to be found in some temperature controls on air conditioners, perhaps some newer analog radio tuner dials, although a bunch of those are usually going to be rotary as far as I've seen myself. Potentiometers have two different curves for their output, linear and logarithmic. Linear means if you turn it all the way down, let's just say whichever side is down, uh, then the output is at 0%. If you turn it all the way up, it's at 100%. Halfway is 50%. A quarter of the way is 25%. It's just the graph of y equals x, linear. Logarithmic is, unsurprisingly, a logarithmic curve. This is useful for things like volume knobs because the human senses are logarithmic. Hearing, for example. If you have a very quiet sound and you turn it up a little bit, a human is going to easily detect that difference. It's going to be noticeable. If you have a very loud sound and you turn it up just that same little bit, most people won't even notice at all. It's very difficult to notice. So the closer it is to zero, the smaller the setting, the more effect a small change will have. So that allows a volume knob to match the human perception of volume rather than the actual amplitude of the sound itself. And finally, using a potentiometer and a breadboard, you have to make sure when you get the potentiometer that the pins are the right distance and the right size, because not all potentiometers are made for breadboards. This one, the three pins, are made for that. I got it off of SparkFun. And it has these two extra little hooks or whatever on the sides. This is for soldering into a PCB. So I just took a pair of needle nose pliers and bent them down so that I could stick it in a breadboard. Make sure that you look before you buy. Otherwise, you're going to have to do some interesting manipulations with jumper cables to get it into your breadboard. A potentiometer is a three-terminal device. If you connect to these two outer pins, then it isn't a variable resistor at all. It's just a regular resistor. So this is an input pin. This is another input pin or output, whichever way you hook it up. This is a resistive strip. It's essentially one long continuous resistor. So if you hook up your power to these two pins, then whatever value the entire resistor is, in the case of the one I got from SparkFun, it's 10k ohms. This is a linear 10,000 ohm, roughly, of course, potentiometer, rotary. But this outer resistor is your maximum resistance. If you measure the resistance across these two outer pins, then you can find out what your maximum resistance is. That's your simple test if you don't know. The middle pin is where the magic comes in. This is what's called a wiper. And on a straight one, a slider one, it would go back and forth and connect to some metal or whatever. Same principle. But basically, this is just your third conductive pin. This is another wire. And it effectively turns the potentiometer, this resistive strip, into two resistors. A resistor here and a resistor here, based on where the wiper is. So you can see if you connect only to these two pins here, and the wiper is here, let's say that's a third of the way around. So you would have, for a linear potentiometer, you would have about 3,000 sum ohms in a 10,000 ohm one. So the power would go in here, around here, and out here, or backwards, it doesn't matter. Resistors are not polarized, so you can hook them up whichever way you want. But anyway, the power will go through that part of the resistive strip and ignore the rest of this. If you have it over here, then you'll get about a 6,000 ohm resistor, which goes out here, out the middle pin. 
so this would be the low end, turn it up to high. If you want it to go the other way, right, between clockwise and counterclockwise, let's say turning down the knob should increase something. So you can just use these two pins instead. So if you have the potentiometer here, if you have the wiper here, then if you connect these two pins, you get about 6,000 ohms. If you connect these two pins, you get about 3,000. So it just reverses which way is up and down just by switching those two pins. So there are two ways you can look at a potentiometer, a variable resistor or a variable voltage divider. So a variable resistor we've already discussed. It's just a connection to only two pins. One pin is not connected to anything. So you have this connected to your circuit. Somewhere you would have a resistor. Just imagine you have a resistor and you don't know what value you want. For example, there's something called a trim pot. This is a variable resistor, a potentiometer, that's meant to stay in a circuit. Uh, it's usually smaller and it's usually adjusted with a little screwdriver so that it's flatter. So it just has a little slot, and you turn it with a screwdriver, that way it doesn't take up as much space inside. So just imagine if I took this and just rip the knob off, and right here, this little part here, just connected with a screwdriver head, and I turned it that way, that's a trim pot, that you would solder into your PCB and leave there. So, for example, you connect this to an LED or a fan or whatever, and you want to fine-tune exactly how bright or how fast or whatever. So you just connect that in wherever you'd put a resistor, adjust it, and leave it alone. The other way to look at it is a voltage divider, the two resistors. A voltage divider is just a sequence of two or more resistors in series. And they each drop voltage as the power passes through them. If you measure the voltage, if you connect it to your circuit between any of the resistors, you get a different voltage. So. Let's say you have your full power here, your positive, and your negative over here. Then you'd get two-thirds of the voltage, one-third of the voltage, the full voltage, no voltage, if you connect to those parts, if all of these are equal-valued resistors. We'll go into more detail in another video. But suffice it to say, if this is a linear potentiometer, and I have the wiper here, then this is a 50-50 voltage divider, 50%. So if you connect between these two, you get half the voltage. Between these two, you get half the voltage. So what you would do is you hook up your power to one side, your zero to the other, your negative here, and then your circuit would connect here. And you would get a divided voltage based on where the potentiometer is. So let's actually set up a circuit diagram of a potentiometer. You have your power, and let's say this is your load. This is just whatever your circuit is doing. I'll just have a resistor here. And your potentiometer, remember how your potentiometer is effectively two resistors. So we'll just put it up like that. So this represents the resistance on one side of the wiper and on the other side. So if you turn it all the way down, this is effectively a zero ohm resistor, and this, in the case of my SparkFun one, would be a 10,000 ohm resistor. If I turn the wiper all the way up, this would be a 10,000 ohm resistor and this would be a zero ohm resistor. So if you put it halfway, you've got two 5,000 ohm resistors, roughly. So that's how you can visualize your potentiometer. We'll make this a little easier to see. So this is your potentiometer, these two resistors. So let's connect to just two pins first. We'll use this as a variable resistor. So your power positive goes in to this resistor, it comes out, goes to your load, and goes around. Very simple, it's just there. So it's just a variable resistor. So this one's changing, this one's changing, but this one's not connected to anything. So imagine that this resistor is whatever you wanna do, an LED, a fan, anything. And this resistor you can use to adjust the voltage, the amperage, however you wanna look at it, of that device. Now. That was the easy one. Now we'll do the voltage divider, where we use both resistors. So we have a junction between them, of course, and we'll also join the negative power. So just like before, we connect our power through the potentiometer, across the wipers, and out to the negative power of the power supply. So the power is just connected across. Remember, this is a constant resistance. But now we connect our load to here and around to the negative power also. So this is always connected to the full power and it's dividing the voltage between it. And I'm taking that divided voltage, whatever value it is, 
and I'm passing it through my load. So the effect of this is you're going to get, if you turn it all the way one side, you're going to get zero voltage. If you go to the other side, you'll get maximum voltage. So if this is plus five volts, you'll get a five voltage drop across this, where this is essentially resisting nothing. And then anything in between, linear or logarithmic, whichever it is. And this junction, this is where your wiper is. So now let's actually use one. So I have here my potentiometer in my breadboard. Just as a quick note, always try and push down just a little bit on the potentiometer in your breadboard when you turn it. That will help stabilize it so it doesn't wiggle out. We will also be demonstrating with an LED, and I have a resistor for a load. These are all 10,000 ohm resistors, the same as the potentiometer. I'm going to use 5 volts to simulate USB power, because it's fairly common. And now, as remember, have your amps at zero whenever you're not using it, so that you don't forget and fry something, including yourself. So first, I'm not going to hook it up to the power at all. I'm going to measure the resistance. And it doesn't matter which way you hook it up again, because resistors are not polarized devices. They do not have polarity. So I know this is a 10,000 ohm resistor, so I'm going to set it to 20 ohms, to 20 kilo ohms rather, and we get 10.69 roughly. So it's roughly a 10 kilo ohm resistor. Now, that was me hooking across the two outer pins to test the maximum resistance of the device. Now I'll hook to these two pins, the left two, and we'll see that I'm getting the full resistance value because it's turned all the way up. So I will now turn it down and you'll see the resistance goes down to zero. Remember, zero resistance, effectively zero resistance, it's not exactly zero, it's close enough. Effectively zero resistance is a short circuit. So you have to make sure whatever you're connecting this to has some guaranteed ohmic resistance in it. You need an extra resistor or whatever it is has to use the full power like a fan. Otherwise, you'll have a short circuit if you turn your potentiometer all the way one way or the other. It won't short circuit any other value, but once you get towards that zero end, it'll be a short circuit. So anyway, turning it all the way down is zero resistance. Turning it all the way up is full resistance. So now if I use the other two pins, I still had it all the way turned up and now it's at zero, so I turn it all the way down and it goes to full value. So that is just how you reverse the turning direction. For a slider, it just changes which direction is top or bottom. That doesn't matter for the user because the user is just gonna go by whatever label is on the thing. This matters for your circuitry, whatever, whether you want a higher low voltage or higher low resistance to be higher low. So that was the resistance. Let's measure this as a variable amperage source. Now remember, when you're measuring amperage with a multimeter, there is no internal resistance, none to speak of. It's measuring amperage directly. It doesn't want to affect the amperage in the circuit by adding resistance. So you have to have your own load, otherwise you'll short circuit through your multimeter and hopefully blow the fuse. So I'm going to connect the positive power to the left pin of the potentiometer, connecting to these two pins, power's going in here. I'm going to connect the middle pin of the potentiometer to a resistor that simulates our load. I'm going to put the multimeter in line, in series with this. So the positive of the multimeter to the other end of the resistor, and the negative of the multimeter to the negative power. And I'll set it on milliamps. So I will now turn this up to one milliamp. And it will go up to the full five volts, and you will see that it is now passing 0.496 milliamps. So if I turn the potentiometer all the way up, I get 0.240, all the way down 0.496. So you get an amperage in between. So you've got either zero resistance in the potentiometer and your 10K here, or 10K here and another 10K here, or something in between. So that's how you have a variable amperage source. This is how you would use something with a fan. So that's all there is to using a potentiometer with two pins. Now let's use all three. So remember, the full power is connected through the potentiometer, and then you take the voltage division. So positive power to the left pin of the potentiometer, the right pin, the other outer pin of the potentiometer, to your negative power. Positive power here, negative power there. So the full power is going through the full resistor. Then we'll connect our variable part, the middle here, the middle pin, to our resistor, and our resistor, this is simulating our load once again, to the negative power. And now we can measure voltage. My maximum, oh, I should have turned this to zero. 
Remember to set that to zero. One milliamp isn't gonna do anything, but better to, better to get in the habit. So we'll set this to the 20 volt setting because the next lowest is two volts. We've got five volts input. This is for USB. So now, after I turned it down, after I made the circuit, we'll turn it up to one milliamp and it will very slowly eventually go up to five volts. It should. Oh, not quite. So apparently the circuit needs more power. There we go, five volts. We had a lot of resistance after all. 10K is a big resistor. So we'll connect the positive of the voltmeter to that side and the negative to this side. If you connect it backwards, you'll just get a negative voltage. So right now we've got 2.51 volts going across this resistor. So if I turn it all the way down, we get the full five volts. Turn it all the way up, we get zero volts because all of the power essentially is going out the other end. So that is your voltage divider in action. Let's test it with an LED. So I'm going to connect the middle pin of the potentiometer to the positive of the LED and the negative of the LED to the resistor, which is still connected to negative power. And we'll turn that up. We'll turn the potentiometer all the way down and you'll see the LED lights up. Let's get our full five volts just for fun. Now, if I turn the potentiometer up and up and up and up and up and up, the LED turns off. You'll see it blink on as soon as, see, it starts turning on. The uh, forward voltage drop of the LED has to be reached before it'll turn on at all. And then, turns on like that. And there is your potentiometer in action with a voltage divider. So, one more thing. I am adding a second LED. So I'm going to connect positive power to one pin of the potentiometer. Turn down your power. The opposite end of the potentiometer to negative power. And I'm going to send the middle into a resistor. That resistor through this LED, this LED to the negative power. Then the other one I'm connecting, let me switch this actually. Instead of connecting it to the negative power, I'm going to connect it to the right pin of the potentiometer, which is connected to negative power, just to show you how this works across the pins. So you essentially have this part of the circuit with the red LED between these two pins, the, divi the divided voltage and zero volts. So now I'm going to connect the LED, the other LED, the blue one, to these two. So you've got a voltage drop across this one and a voltage drop across this one. So instead of connecting the middle pin, I'm going to connect the left pin, which is from full power through the resistor and a different resistor, same value, 10K, from that to the positive of the LED and then from the negative of the LED to the middle pin. If I can get in there, I didn't do this in a smart way. There we go. Hopefully I didn't just break my wire. So we're taking the voltage across here and the voltage across here. Now I'll turn the potentiometer all the way to one side. Let's see if I did this right. I did. So this LED is lighting up. This one is not. Let me turn it all the way the other way. And that LED lights up. See, this is a little trick. This is one of the tricky things to realize about voltage. Uh, I'll go into this in greater detail in a future video about how voltage is also called potential difference of the electric field, electric charge for a reason. But basically, imagine that every point in a circuit has a voltage, a number. In actuality, there is no such thing as a specific number of voltage. A voltage is always a difference, but just pretend that let's say this one's five volts, this one's three volts, and this one's zero volts, right? So this would be positive power, negative power. If this is five and this is three, then between these two pins, your actual voltage is two. If this is three and this is zero, your actual voltage is three. If this is five and zero, your actual voltage is five. That's how you can connect things through a circuit. So you can get a funny effect like this. Fun stuff. And turn your amps down. And so you have potentiometers. Not really a complex idea, not really a complex device, but there are lots of implications of how you use them and two different main operating modes. You can use them to configure a circuit anywhere there would be a resistor, and you can use them as input from the user, such as your volume dial. But that's about it for now. As usual, one video has spawned ideas for many more videos to come. Be seeing you.